Parsons. Lord, open our ears. For hearing we will hear and shall not understand. Lord, open our eyes. For seeing we will see and not perceive. Lord, open our hearts. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Now these words, they sound sad, but these are words that Paul quotes from Isaiah in that last chapter. And I'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into this place this morning. For telling us we need to be in the house of the Lord. For bringing us here safely. For getting us in. Sometimes we can't be here with health issues, but today we are. Lord, bless us as we are here and let us learn from you and learn of your ways and of your book. And let us all come to a firmer belief in the gospel, maybe for the first time, maybe renewed. As we pray together as a church family, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Say standing for the in song. <laughs> Good morning. Please join us as we sing for the beauty of the earth.
Miss Linda sends in a couple. She can't be here today because her brother David is coming home from the hospital right now, and she's with them. He has had a brain bleed, if you remember. David Rand still Linda's brother. And also she sends in a prayer concern that her daughter-in-law in Florida, Amy Mepper, has stage four of melanoma. So a couple of big concerns there for Linda Popiak's family. In my opening up to you all right now. Phil. Um, just keep my mom in prayer. She's just hurting. And her best friend from her childhood, her her best friend's husband, he used to work in an atomic plant. Whenever he's got some kind of lung disease and they can't figure out what's how to fix it. He's been taking treatments for like three or four months and they're not getting him long now. Mm. Nothing's working. Do you know his name? Uh, Tom Orender. Orinder? Orinder. Yeah, we have him on the list too. Okay. Who else today? Miss Jane in the back. She's, by the way, welcome back from surgery. Girl's name is Katie McAllister, a college student, got hit by a bus driver in the back of the street at UK. Very serious. Alistair, a student at UK. From Carroll County. We'll keep that same uh, vein and then I'll get to Victor. Um, if you see, if you have a prayer list at the end of the page, it says the Jake Luxemburger family. Uh, some of you all know about that if you were here on Wednesday night and I shared a Facebook post about it. The young man that was killed in a car wreck. Uh, high speed chase, uh, some of the stolen car written through 71, and he came off the exit and plowed into a car that the grandmother was taking her grandson birthday shopping, and she survived. He did not. He was a student of mine. I've known that family for 10 years, and they're devastated. This little boy was going to turn 11 tomorrow, and he passed away last Saturday. So it's been a mess, and uh, school community that I worked in 17 years is certainly uh, in great mourning. So Jake Luxembourg. Victor, I saw you. Mm -hmm. Pray for Samantha. She's had an ongoing struggle with a lot of disease. She's watching from here today. She's not <coughs> Samantha struggles with Lyme disease and has symptoms sometimes, and this weekend is sick. So prayers for Sam, and I'm sure she's got the little guy with her. So, prayers for Samantha. I'm glad that Victor and Victor are here. I'm glad that your in-laws are here, too, who've been not feeling great. Troy's been down for the count, and as Andrea was, too, a bit, and... A lot of you all are probably saying inside your head, saying, yep, us too. It's been a lot. Our house has been too, for sure. Nellie. I'm all better. I'm eating, drinking, sleeping. God kicked that medicine in. I've been listening to Carmen sing champion all week. <laughs> so you're, you're back all silver. <laughs> I'm sure he'll just keep me on saying that. What day did you say? The 10th. The 10th. The doctor had already set that up from the get go. That sounds good. October 10th. All right. Yes. Had I already told you about Ruthie Dimes? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Harry, has anybody chimed in on the Facebook chat with a prayer concern? I know you've got people on there. Nothing yet in that regard, okay. Anybody else this week? Sarah. We brought that up last week. What did you tell us their name? I can't remember. I did, and I think she's still, she's on here, but I don't. It was a different Absolutely.
any others today? Barb. Sometimes the ones that are unspoken are the really, really, really tough serious ones. For sure. I'll add one. Uh, Barb makes me think of it because I know she and Casey were in training yesterday for the prison ministry REC that's going to happen in two weeks. But just be in prayer for all the ministry weekends that are happening in October, both in the prisons and outside of the Razor Wire with the men's and women's Emmaus walks, residents in County Christ at uh, Rotor Correctional Complex. Uh, some of you all know that uh, I was able to be at a meeting at the Oldham County Detention Center, the new facility near Buckner. We're hoping there's going to be a lot more Jesus in that space. Uh, they were a new facility, then COVID hit, everything shut down. Everything. They got a lot of problems in there. People trying to smuggle fentanyl in, lots of things going on. So we need Jesus there. Yes, Nellie? Oh, okay. I thought you might have had a different concern, but I'm glad we need some praise of God for that. And I've added the uh, detention center onto the list. And of course, Emmaus and REC are always on there because those are ministries a lot of us in this room are involved in uh, for years and currently as well. Any others today? Trish? Uh, just continued prayers for my mom. She's um, gone to the doctor and had some blood work done and they found out that she now has liver damage, so she's got an ash, uh, it's fatty liver. So Liska Cogashell has been on the list for a while and has had lots of concerns, including a stroke within the last few weeks. Now liver damage added to that. She needs to be in our prayers for sure. Any more? Let's have a quiet time of prayer, and I'll close this with corporate prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of the earth as a uh, our ladies chose for our hymn this morning. Uh, spectacular out these windows and our doors open at the front of the church because it's so nice. Take those blessings of the second day of fall. Let us see your majesty there. Lord, we come to you in, in prayer for lots of needs for Susan Bates, still hurting, Alyssa Cogashell, more diagnoses. Thank you, Lord, for Nellie Hayden's progress this week. It's been a good week, and things are uh, falling into place. Let her appointment go well in a couple of weeks. Prayers for Amy Mefford, Linda's daughter-in-law. Not good. Also, uh, not good right now, Tom Oren. Prayers for Samantha Leachman with flare-ups right now with Lyme disease. For Katie McAllister, crossing the road at UK, a local girl that is a student there, and a lot of complications from being hit on the street. For David Ransdell, coming home today, having suffered brain bleed. For the Emmaus and REC weekends that are coming up in October, they're almost here, and a lot of us are involved in those. For the upcoming ministries at the Oldham County Detention Center, which includes lots of inmates from Henry County right here. It's not just Oldham County. It services Henry County as well. Unspoken prayer needs. Ones that you know about. Too tender to mention. Be with Daryl's boss as he's lost his mother. Be with the family of Jake Luxemburger in Crestwood and uh, Kenwood Station Elementary. Uh, students and staff and families reeling from that loss. Uh, Jake, the loss of any child is terrible, but Jake was the type of kid that everybody in the entire school knew because of his personality. Uh, it, it's been a rough week, and it'll be a long time before that settles down. Lord, 
Lord, hear our prayers. And for any others that have not been brought up today, we have such a long list. Be with the ministries of this church. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Celebrations, you see, we have uh, an October calendar. Next Sunday begins October. Wanted to get a head start and make sure you have that now, and we'll have some more laying out for people that aren't here today. But this week, starting on the 24th, I don't see any birthdays listed in the last week of September. Are there any birthdays that we're not aware of because you're not yet a member of the church, you don't have your birthday in the calendar, anybody? Okay, I know there's an anniversary coming up this Saturday. 62 years, I believe. Some couple here has been married that long. I wish I hadn't given that away. I usually ask the man, but I know he knows because they were talking about it last night. But my mom and dad married in 1961 on September 30th, and we've got a few more anniversaries like that in our church family. Uh, whether they're able to be in attendance in person or online, we've got some couples who've been married 50-plus years. Anybody else have an anniversary this week? Are going to sing happy anniversary to Melissa and Kirk. I'll say mom and dad, but you all can say Melissa and Kirk. Okay. J.R. might say that. <laughs> happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to long ever. Happy anniversary to you. Many, many more. time, things going on in the life of the church. Do remember that we have a double header of softball today. I'm easily reminded about that because I see some uh, some regalia being worn right now. Mm -hmm. Several different uh, softball outfits. Games at 1.30 and 2.30. I told Harold, uh, JR's dad, that i uh, got to make sure the preacher don't go over long today. So I'll, <laughs> I'll put in a good word for you. So that we can get to the park by 1.30. The first game is ours. The second game is ours too. So we've got this Sunday and next Sunday for softball for sure. <laughs> Volleyball will start in a couple weeks. So we do have the schedule and it is in the bulletin now. So if you are a fan of coming to Crawford for our volleyball that's on Tuesday nights, it's right there. It's a good time. We have a good time. Win or lose, it's good. And, and Paula's sister Vicki runs the league and uh, she does a great job. Now, into what else is happening this week? We're having a movie night Wednesday. We were hoping to show Sound of Freedom, but it's doing too well in the theaters. It's not going to be released on streaming or DVD until late October, they say now, but I, I really want to see it. So we're going to show another one that we do have, the same people with Mark did it. It's called His Only Son. Showed a trailer of it before worship started, and it concerns Abraham and Isaac and what goes on in the book of Genesis with them. It is a good movie, totally different from Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom is modern day, very suspenseful, wild and crazy. I know a lot of you have seen it. His only son is good. Bring your Bible. We will read the scripture of Genesis 22 after the movie. That's this Wednesday. We finished up our time with The Chosen, season three. And if you see on the screen underneath the picture of His only son, you see Book of Romans, Bible study. In a week and a half, we will start a 16-chapter, 16 16-week 16 study in the book of Romans, which is a real Christianity one-on-one. If you think, man, I, I'm just not sure what Christianity is about. I feel like I don't know a lot. I don't know enough. I wish I knew more. This would be a really good opportunity to step in. Because from the first chapter to the 16th, it really, really breaks down not only what Christians believe, but how to put that into play in your life. So it's going to be great. We'll take a couple breaks from it during the 16 weeks for this or that. Mm -hmm. Holidays off. Movie night with Sound of Freedom coming out for October, for November. Good stuff going on there. Um, a couple other things that aren't on the screen but are happening. The River of Earth Book Club, the first meeting is at Wanda's house, which is located there. I mean, literally right up there. October 5th. 6.15 or 6.30. It's kind of like the progressive get there when you can Thursday night, October 5th. If you don't have a book, 
we're out of books, but we'll go get more. It's great. We've given out 20 books already, and the bookstore is located two doors from our door. So we can get more. We'd love to have as many as possible. And I really torment Wanda with that many people come to her house that night. But anyway. And Wanda, some people have asked for a map. You can give them a little quick map of how to get you. Where do you live at, Wanda? Top of the hill. Take a right. Second house on the left. Yeah. So if you're going up, traveling. You miss it. <laughs> you really can't. And once you get past the turn, you can just about see it, can't you? Yep. So when you get to the top of the hill, don't swing left on Maddox. Just go on out to the right. There Gray you are. Barn's got Coleman on the side of it. A lot of y'all uh, went there for the cookout we had after the first baptism Sunday of the summer. So we'll be there. We'll be there October 5th. And read the first five chapters before that, right? Correct. It's a chapters. little bit long, but uh, like the next... pages. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the next uh, five chapters is really short. Anyway. Mm -hmm. It's a good deal. All right, we had choir today. We'll have choir again in two weeks. We're doing that every other week. The trailer treat. Remember, I saw some of you bring in candy right behind George and Earl is a big silver tub. Put in candy. We're going to have 1,500 scripture bookmarks to give out at the trailer treat because kids are going to see a lot of darkness and a lot of bloody vampire witchy stuff in October. How about some Jesus and some scripture? They can have that too. Let's take over with that, okay? Um, Harriet, anything about Emmaus you want to say with it coming up here? Um, just if you're on the fence, make a decision. <laughs> yeah. Come, please, please come for the weekend if you've never been on Emmaus and you want to be more stronger in your faith and in the leadership. Mm -hmm. This is a weekend for you, yeah. men or women. And by leadership, it doesn't mean you're going to be expected to sign up to be right. a Sunday school teacher or an elder or something. It means no. that you want to take your Christianity to the next level. Amanda's going as what we call a pilgrim, and it'll be a great time for her, and several of us are going to be on the team working. There's a men's walk, too, and just the same. The dates are right there. It'll be great. Um, a couple things to send around. Uh, one, the clipboard that has the directory on it, Harriet. I put a new title. What's the title say? We are the church. Underneath that picture. That's the t-shirt model. There's oh, oh. This one? Yeah. Fall 2023 20, directory? Yeah. <laughs> I know that some folks, that, that's really, really intense, isn't it? Well, there have been some folks that said, you know, we're not a member of the church. We come here every week. So I took off the word membership. Oh. If that's something that's like, well, you know, we're still a member of another church, but this is our church, and do we belong in the directory? You want to pass it around? Yeah. Again? If you come to this church, get yourself in the directory. Just check it make sure it's... Mm -hmm. So that people can check on you with your phone number, your address, send you a birthday card, whatever. If you're in there, it's fine. If you'd like to look at your picture and want it redone, that's great. We would like to eventually print that. But I know there have been questions about, should I be in there? Should I not be in there? Can I be in there? Yes. This is your church to do it. The other thing to send around, uh, Jane, is this the last Sunday for the orders? <coughs> All right, why don't we just say this is it, and then I will put a one call now for anybody that's not here or some families are not here today due to illness or other work engagements and stuff, and I can say you better call us and get on it, right? Okay, I will do that. So there's the binder, send it around. I know a lot of you have been in it. And when you pay for your shirts, pay for because she goes ahead and uh, settles things with Jane ahead of time and then just chat your cash to Dreading Christian Church so that Barb can go ahead and put it into our account. And put it at the bottom, whatever they have, whether it's a t-shirt or hoodie or sweat. Yeah, t-shirts, yeah, hoodies, and crew neck sweatshirts. <coughs> Same for the volleyball players. The shirts are uh, $8. And the team voted to have the... Hunter, or not Hunter, military green Heather shirts that so many of you bought. So I thought they'd vote for pink or something, but they voted for military green. So that's what they'll be wearing for volleyball. Really cool. All right. Um, we had a board meeting last week. Casey, is there anything that we need to say from the board meeting? Um, other than uh,
service thing because the details that I was originally given were not exactly accurate. And I met with Mike earlier in the week and he lined all that out. It seems like a pretty good deal, but before we move forward, just a real quick thumbs up thing. Yep, meet Casey on the porch at the conclusion of service. <coughs> Fellowship time. Let's get up and see every body. Come on.
Okay. something for the kids on Wednesday nights. Our Wednesday night has been strong for a long time. And if you come on Wednesday nights, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't come on Wednesday nights, you've probably heard us here talk about Wednesday nights are special. They're good. And it's not just because of beans and corn. 
It's because of what happens in talk and Bible and friendship. What about the kids? We were approached by one of you all here about praying over leading us and coordinating us in a program on Wednesday nights. Is it okay to say it? Andrea would like to start Awana here. Awana is a time-honored curriculum-based program that right now there's not a location close here that has it. When I looked on their website, and we are now registered as an Awana church, the only one that came up when I put our zip code was Providence Baptist, and it's expired. There's a need for this program in Henry County. I drove past an Awana church for 17 years, teaching at Kenwood Station, Crestwood Baptist. Andrea has contact there. Her kids went through it, and she's actually going to uh, shadow someone there to learn more about it and to get us ready. So, if you have kids here, you have grandkids, great-grandkids, here or not in church, get them ready. Andrew, would you tell us just a little bit about what a one is structured like on an evening? It's, it's good. Basically, it's Bible memorization um, taught at their level, whatever uh, grade level they're at, reading level. But it's um, it's structured to where they're learning a verse, they're hearing uh, a Bible story that relates to them, their lives now, and then it's a fellowship time. They have snack time. They have craft time. So it's uh, I would call it a mix of vacation Bible school with Bible memorization. Um, I'm, I'm going to go watch. I, my kids were in it, but I never did a leadership role, so I'm going to go watch how it's facilitated. Um, but I did volunteer in it when my kids were in it, and I know that it's a wonderful program because it gets God's Word in their minds, and that's what we really all need to have is, is God's Word hidden in our heart that we might not sin against him. And the way that they structure it, it just goes uh, week by week until they have memorized that verse. And so um, I'm excited and also nervous <laughs> because I don't really like leadership. <laughs> so I, I like to volunteer, but I like for somebody to tell me what to do and where to be, when. And <laughs> so, yeah, Charlie sure, sure likes that about me. But, um, yeah. but um, so I, I would appreciate everyone's prayers as we move forward. I know we'll start off rocky because it's new, and there'll be bumps in the road, but hopefully um, uh, we'll overcome those, and just I would really appreciate your all's prayers. So anything I need to add? Well, I'll just add on your behalf. It's not just going to be Andrea. Okay? <laughs> hopefully not. We dare not. So if that gave you a feeling in your heart of hmm, curious, I'd like to know more, I'd like to be around it, talk to Andrea, okay? She's spearheading this, and it is not a program where you have to invent the wheel. It's time-honored. It's a curriculum. They have resources, resources, resources. Get on awana.org if you have a computer or phone. And it's a lot. And their belief statements are very clear. I mean, they believe solid, hardcore Bible, Christianity. That's it. And it has puppets. Oh. And it has um, little vests that they get. And they, similar to Boy Scouts, they get patches for different verses. And so that sold me on it when my kids were little because that was just too cute. <laughs> it's an incentive. Yeah, pa Patrick was a Especially motivated by the patches. <laughs> yeah. Whatever works. Yeah. Getting into scripture. <laughs> Love it. So it won't be starting this Wednesday night, but it'll come. Uh, the, the process has begun. This is huge, guys. Yeah, yeah.
Who's more important than the kids? And we've got babies that this is about too. You know, we got four babies that we want to grow into this because it starts at age three, doesn't it? It can go up to age 17, isn't it? Yeah, and through high school, yeah. but, um, the high school program will do it right start year. So she's got plans for us to have some preschool and elementary type stuff because of our clientele. Every kid that's in this room and every kid that sometimes comes here or that you have that you wish were in a program, it's going to happen. It's going to be here. That's why I couldn't possibly be more excited about this. This is great. You want to pray, Nellie? No, I, I will pray. But I don't want to thank Andre. I want to thank all of us to give God a big hand. Thank him for this because he's given this to her and to us. That's right. She <laughs> That's right. Will you pray? Yes, I will. All right, let's pray. Thank you, God. This is an answer to all our prayers. All of us that have wanted our children to know you seek you and search your word. It's just a complete answer, Lord. And I just thank you and I thank Andrea for being a willing hand to do it and to lead us all in helping her, which we will. We just praise you, Lord, and give you all the praise and all the glory for everything and every blessing in our lives. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Last thing I'll say is I know that you're going to have to be a uh, records check to even go to Crestwood Baptist, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it's a good example to set by their church. We want to be very, very intentional about who works with our kids. Right. Why wouldn't we? So uh, we're going to set up guidelines and parameters about that to protect our children, your children, our children. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. It's a coming. It's time for Holy Communion. If you don't already, already believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is a time to affirm that belief. He did all of this for us so that we would not have to be the sacrifice. You know, the Jews, they would take a different type of bird, different type of mammal, different type of creature, and sacrifice it at their temple or at their synagogue in order to please God. And that all came to an end as Jesus Christ became the ultimate sacrifice. If it was left up to your sins or mine, we would all be unworthy. Nobody in this room measures up. We are all full of sin. Period. So as we take of these elements today, just a little scrap of bread and a little pinch of juice, think about who that is for Jesus Christ. It says on the table, do this in remembrance of me. As we prepare for our communion now, we have a beautiful hymn that the ladies will lead us in. Please join me, home, home, home.
because of your grace, because of your sacrifice on the cross, that, that we are welcome to your kingdom. It's not because of anything we've done or anything we'd ever do. When we come to your table, come with clean mind and open heart. In your name we do this. Amen. 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 same manner he blessed the wine and poured his disciples. So this represents my blood that will be shed for the of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As so always, Father God, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our offering is in the back. If you're online uh, with worshiping with us today, you can send your tithes or offerings to Drennan Christian Church, P.O. Box 495, Newcastle, Kentucky, 40050. Would you all stand as the ladies lead us in doxology?
Now, Lord, send us into the Bible. Let us learn of you and your holy word. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I've said many times in the last week or two that I don't believe I've ever had a period of being in the Bible in my entire life more than this summer and now early fall. And I've gotten to the point, including this very morning, where I feel like I wake up way too early before any kind of alarm goes off to be in the Bible. And that's not easy, is it? It's not easy on any of us as our human selves with our own human brains, human hearts, human diversions to get into the Bible. But I've been in it more, and I know that's good, and I know that's good for me, and it's good for you. And I've spent the last eight weeks in the book of Acts, 28 chapters studied over 56 days, eight weeks. And here we are. Now, I have a really weird picture on the front of the screen and on the front of your bulletin, and I don't know if you ever looked at it thus far today and thought, I, I got nothing. I don't know what that is. The only clue that could give it away, perhaps, is the little blue rectangle near the top. Can you see it? Can you see what it is? I see some of you grab your bulletin and looking. It's kind of hard to see. It's not a necklace. It was a chain. Harriet and I took that photo at St. Paul Beyond the Walls Church in Rome back in May, May 15th, the day after Mother's Day. And behind that grate, the lattice work, is a stone ossuary, a box that they say there holds the earthly remains of Paul. Now, whether they do or not means nothing. I don't care about a box of bones. What I do care about is this is where Paul supposedly was martyred. And the chain up there, whether it is or not, it's not for me to answer. They say is a chain that held him as he was martyred. The Paul from the Bible. That was extremely humbling. Can't see it in the photo, but the box actually says here lies the remains of Paul in Latin. As humbling an experience as I've ever had, and we were very teary-eyed there because of who that is. Most of the latter part of the book of Acts is about Paul and what he does, where he goes on these many journeys, and where the book of Acts ends. It's not the end of Paul's story. It's not the end of any of the apostles' story. It's really more the beginning. Is in Rome. So I told you last week that Jesus appeared to Paul and said, Buddy, your destination's Rome. And you know why it was, if you know anything about church history or even world history at that time, is that Rome was the center of the world. Now we can... We can Contradict that and say, you know, the center of our faith has always been Jerusalem. That's God's city and God's holy land. And everything has come through there and will return there through Revelation. But at that time in the world, in the world's eyes, Rome. So he gets there and it talks about him teaching from morning to evening. I'm going to read you just a little snippet of it. This is the last part of... Chapter 28, verses 23 to 31, and it says, So when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. Now, I know I joked earlier that I told Harold last night when we were bowling for JR's birthday that we had to keep the preacher in line so that we could get to the ball game in time to play ball at 1.30. But imagine if it were like with Paul in Rome, he's preaching from morning till evening. Do you remember a few weeks ago I read you a snippet from one of these chapters where he was preaching so long and they had a lot of candles going on in the room at night. It got toasty in there and that one guy fell out the window. And died on the sidewalk outside and they had to revive him. That's a lot of preaching. 
It says right here, Paul did just that. So he's in Rome. He's in the thick of it. Now, our experience in Rome, we were there from Sunday morning till Tuesday morning on that trip. Then we got back on Friday afternoon and we're there till Saturday. Rome is, it's, it's a giant city. Everything on earth is going on there. Now, was it our favorite part of Italy? No, probably our least favorite because it was a big city. You know, we like being out in the beautiful parts with the beautiful countryside, the beautiful, colorful buildings, and just more quaint. But Rome is it, and it's been that way forever. But he's right there. Now, look what he's teaching from. Right before it says, morning till evening, it says, testify the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law and Moses and the prophets. So if anybody ever tells you to throw out that first three fourths of the Bible, the Old Testament, well, I'm not having it. No, sir. Paul right there is teaching them from the law of Moses. You know, those first several books of the Old Testament. He's also teaching from the prophets. And I know some of our Wednesday night folks would give you an amen because if we can see Jesus in the words of Amos, in the words of Joel, in the words of Malachi, one I've read lately, I was telling Casey about it the other day, the words of Zechariah, the words of Daniel. Here Paul's going to use the words, hey Laban, you're in town, of Isaiah. Paul is going right to the source and saying, y'all got questions about Jesus? Oh, he's right here in this book. Every word, and I'll talk from morning till evening. And at the bottom it said, and some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. Now that's pretty accurate for how it's going to be anywhere, isn't it? Even here. You know, just because you're coming into a church and you're sitting in a pew and you've got a beautiful Drennan t-shirt that says we are the church, that doesn't mean that you believe every single word of the Bible, does it? Now I hope you do. Through my lifetime, especially during my adulthood, and especially once I started getting into Bible study, once I started dating Harriet, that's when that began, I've come to the point where I believe every word in here is true. And that certainly, when I started believing in that, flew in the face of things that maybe I thought before, or believed before, or was taught before. You could easily start thinking in the Bible, it's symbolic. Or it's a parable or a, an allegory or a story. Or it's a simile or a metaphor. I think it's all true, every bit of it. And so I just prefer to be ready for when he does what he says he's going to do. Speaking of that, you know, not only have we been reading from the prophets this past year on Wednesday nights, we looked at First and Second Thessalonians that talk all about when he's going to come. We look to the past for words about Jesus. We look to the future for words about Jesus. But not everybody believes. It says some were persuaded by the things which were spoken and some of them disbelieved. I hate it. It's discouraging. Some of you have shared with me or shared with others in the church when you try to teach your loved ones from the Bible and say this is what I believe and this is true and I know it. Not every single one of them is going to believe. Shoot. But it's true. Moving on, verse 25 and following says, So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed. After Paul had said one word. Now this doesn't mean a word he said. It's like he gave them a holy word. And this is where he's going to go into Isaiah. So he, he, he's going to quote some prophets. And this is where... We had it this morning when Gene led us in the call to worship. He says, The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing, you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing, you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Now, you know, with this being Isaiah, this being several hundred years before Jesus came about, and before Paul is, is reading this, that this is about the Jews. 
right? The Christians weren't there yet when Isaiah wrote this. Now, he prophesied all about Jesus, and we use a lot of those prophecies during, you know, Christmas quoting. You know, a lot of you like to quote it from the King James, me too, because when you hear those words, and you'll hear them again this Christmas, from Isaiah about that baby Jesus coming, and also about what happens at Easter too, sounds the best in the King James. But it's saying for these folks, the Jews, they hear, they don't understand. They see, they don't perceive. And their hearts have grown dull. That's about the Jews. But let's not blame them because I say it's also just as much, if not more so, about us. Because if any of us here in this church or any other church that's meeting right now or that met earlier today or met last night or is meeting on a Thursday night or wherever they are, are seeing this, not perceiving what it means, hearing it, not understanding, and having a heart that's grown dull, well, we have heard the story of Jesus. We have the Gospels readily available to us. We have Bibles free and easy to get. And if that's us and we don't get it or we don't care or our hearts are too stony to even have an idea, to me that's worse than in the time of Isaiah. Because we've seen about Jesus. We've read about Jesus. And I hope and pray that you can say in your life that you've experienced Jesus because another part of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, resides in your heart and you know it. Like I've told you many times, I've said this to Jr. a lot, as his dad, even though he's an old man with a beard now, is that I know the existence of the Holy Spirit because when I make a decision that is kind and selfless and godly, that ain't me. That's him. I don't know about you, but if left to myself, my default position is selfish, sinful. I would say ornery, but I think the correct pronunciation in Henry County is ornery. <laughs> I don't know how to spell ornery. Probably never knew how to spell it. But I was called it a few times. Were any of you, amen, you were called ornery? Maybe you still aren't. Well, Moving on, Scripture says, verse 27 says, Their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Again, these are the words of Isaiah, saying these folks should know. They should hear it, they should see it, they should understand it in their hearts, but they're not, and I will heal them. And we know who the, the healer is. Isaiah talks about Jesus as much or more than anybody. It says, therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. Now, this is something controversial in the time of Paul. Peter didn't always like it himself. A lot of the folks didn't like it, because the Gentiles means those folks that are not in the synagogue. They're not the Jews. And you know, the message was supposed to go to the Jews first, and it was supposed to be their message. And a lot of folks that were Jewish said, hey, mine, ours, not you Gentiles, and Paul was going to be a Pharisee, remember? This flies in the face of what he had going to. Now he's a Roman citizen. But he's saying to a lot of the Jews that he's speaking to around the Holy Land and around Turkey and around now Italy, Rome, this message is going to the Gentiles. Now, if we look back and say just by history, oh, that's terrible. So terrible to be a Jew. Now, I'm going to point at us again, too. In our time, Right now, you know what analogy I would make? Is that maybe Paul's saying, yeah, church, you've heard it, but you didn't really hear it. You saw it, and you didn't really perceive it. It came to your heart, it was too dull. Church, so the message will go out. 
to people that are not in the church. Now, we've seen some of that here because I know a lot of you in this room have come to the church in kind of a roundabout manner. Now, I know there are some of us in the room that have been in church your entire life, and you've mostly lived as well as you can try a godly existence. You know, one of my favorite phrases, don't drink, don't chew, don't run with girls that do. <laughs> a lot of people think that's what Christianity means, and it does not. Now, that doesn't mean that God wants you to go out drinking all the time and chewing all the time and running around with fast women. It doesn't mean that at all. But what it means is that, you know what, if you base your salvation on your behavior, you're going to fall on your face. It's going to be like stepping on a rake. Because you're going to fail. I know I have. But church, if you think that your existence is based on your behavior because you've been in church and you've lived mostly clean, that's not what Christianity is about. And sometimes, maybe the best preachers you've heard or testifiers you've heard or people that are Christian that you've experienced have been the ones that have lived and honorary life and found the Lord after being honorary. Amen. It's true, Troy. I'm thinking about Barb and Casey again. They were in their training yesterday. Not because they're honorary. Yeah, well, they are. Rather, but no, no, no. Thank you very much. They just stepped right into that. But they went to the prison training yesterday. So they were there much of the day from the morning till the early afternoon. Because to go to the prison to work with these inmates, whether it's at one of the women's prisons or the men's facilities, this is Rotor, where these guys they're going to work with are almost out of prison. And they're in a substance abuse program to make sure they're literally clean before they go home. They have to go train. And they're going to meet some guys on that weekend. There will probably be 70 or 80 inmates in khaki or gray. Some of them are going to come across to Barb and Casey as amazing Christians. But they have lived very sinful lives. And part of that living a sinful life has led them to Christ because the way it was before didn't work. Living for yourself didn't work. And the only last gasp chance was to hold on that hand that came down in the water and pulled you out. We watched The Chosen this week and Peter was walking on the water and he got afraid and he started sinking. But that hand came down and died. Jesus pulled him out. A lot of those men and women that they're going to go minister to in a prison are going to be those ones that that hand had to come down and get them before they sank all the way to the bottom like a stone. So I love it when I see in our church folks come in to this place who may not look like stereotypical church folk. They may not act like stereotypical church folk. We might be a little rough around the edge, a little scruffy. Good. Bring it on. So when Paul's saying that message is going to the Gentiles, he's saying sometimes us folks that have heard the message our whole lives and have been in that synagogue every day, stony heart. At the bottom it says they'll hear. Next part says, And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Now if I stood up here, I'm saying it right now, if I'm saying church folks, I'm Sometimes it ain't us, is it? Because we can sit here and be all high and mighty and say we got it all figured out because we're in church. You may not like that. Yeah, yeah, it's not a very attractive word sometimes to hear that, oh, you're in church, so you must be perfect. Well, you're not perfect. Neither am I. Just ask Carrie. Ask JR. And ask my parents. Mm. Not at all. Don't laugh too hard, Mom. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> But they dispute it because they don't want to hear it. You know, we're in church. Aren't we great? Aren't we holy? Don't we have it all figured out? Mm. I hope there were some Jews that heard that that are like, yep. That's right, Paul. I'm not all I've been cracked up to be. I'm a sinful man, or in some cases a woman would say that. I'm full of sin. I'm in a sin of God. I'm full of sin. Last part of the story says, Then Paul, 
dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Pretty good for a prisoner, right? He's still kind of under a little bit of a house arrest. But he's preaching every single day. Everybody's coming to him and he's preaching with full confidence because he knows that what he has in his heart, what Christ has given him, is the message that is supposed to go out. In this case, to the Gentiles and the Jews. Now that's the end of the book of Acts. It doesn't say, and then he was beheaded. We don't have that part. We rely on history for that and tradition. A lot of people think he went on to Spain. He really wanted to go to Spain. Some people think he spent some time, I think, on Crete ministering. So there was some time left in Paul's existence, but he does make his way back to Rome. And that's where we are here. You know, a lot of the churches, the ancient churches, were built on a holy spot. You know, in Jerusalem, I hope and pray that we're able to go uh, sooner rather than later to the Holy Land. And they built churches where we think maybe Jesus was crucified, where they think maybe his tomb was. In Bethlehem, there's a church where they think that inn was that had no vacancy. They built churches there. For us here, whether that is his bone, whether that's that chain or whether that was bull hockey, what was in our thoughts was Paul, that guy in the Bible. And he's saying, truth because truth needs to be said. And I want to say that here. If any of us think we've arrived in the church and we have it all figured out because we're in the church, we have some special force field that says we are not sinners because we're in the church, terrible teaching. It's not true. Don't believe it. Don't believe it if I say it. Call me out on it if I do. Instead, how about this? We're sinners and God loves us anyway. We take Holy Communion, the bread of the Jews symbolizing his body broken for us. His body was broken for you. The juice that we take symbolizes his blood that was shed for you and for me. We do this in remembrance of him and that's why we're here. Now I'll say this right before we have a closing hymn. There is a fountain. The ladies are going to lead us in that song and I would say this is a time if you've never made that commitment and never said you know I, I believe in Jesus but I've never said so. Or, this is my church, but I've never said so. This is the time to do it. I think we got four verses. Do we have four verses, Amanda? There's five. Man, that's a lot. Okay. I don't know how many I have on the screen. Just sing, okay? Until the words run out. I don't know how many I have up there. We might have all five. I don't know. We'll just sing. But if you need to make a decision during that song, then do so. I'll come down here, turn off my microphone so that you don't hear me singing but stand together so that you can hear her singing and Cindy playing. Sing as a church family.
<laughs> we have fun at Trinity. <laughs> I'm so glad this is on video. <laughs> Troy, would you pray for us? We've missed you the last couple weeks. I sure will. Thank you. Our most heavenly Father, thank you so much for your son that you sent for us. Help us to realize we're all sinners and not be judgmental. Sometimes most wicked that you pursue with a change of heart to do the most good. Be with us. Be with all those on our prayer list. All those, uh, we give praise to your celebrations that were announced today. 62 years of marriage. Wow. Yeah, that's been a while. Father, be with us. Keep us safe through the work week. Watch for those that are home that cannot make it today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.